Businesses in Abuja groan as they receive notice of air pollution levy from the FCT administration. This will affect all generator users. to the already homeless state. And sportswear maker Puma terminates deal with Nigeria. It's a rainy uh, Thursday, I was going to say Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday morning here in Lagos and I uh, would say good morning and welcome to the breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for joining us and having breakfast with us. I am yes. Usaugi Ogbon. And I am Annette Felix. Well, today is not a fantastic day for most Nigerians because of all we've seen in the news. First of all, we heard about these levies that um, residents of the FCT have to pay and then uh, a shocker for a country that um, the German sportswear uh, company is mm. pulling out of a deal we had with the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, AFN. Now, this story made headlines last year when AFN President um, Ibrahim Shiogusso, you know, was embroiled with this whole, oh, he signed a deal with Puma because, you know, Nigeria used to use our local, locally manufactured kits to compete at these international games. But he went on to have this agreement with uh, Puma that was in Doha in 2019. But when he came back home, Nigeria's Ministry of Sports in the, and um, the minister in the person of Sunday Dari said they had no idea what that deal was about. They were not carried along, and so they had nothing to do with it. So it then became a situation where um, you've signed an agreement with this company to go ahead and manufacture sportswear for you or sports kits for your, for your people. And then the country is saying that uh, no such a deal exists because they were not aware of it. It makes me ask questions. Is it that um, this AFN president did not carry um, the sports ministry along because I feel that they should be collaborating. It's something that you should have discussed locally. You should have discussed this at home before going ahead to sign something, you know, with this this with this company. So it makes me ask questions as to, you know, what exactly is there is there really challenges between the AFN and the Ministry of Sport? Are they having problems with their relationship? And now it seems like a disgrace for us because Puma has pulled out. I mean, they actually put out a statement yesterday. Um, this was a message that they sent. Um, uh, they basically says that they are um, basically pulling out and explicitly declaring that they are discharged from all obligations uh, towards all stakeholders and that uh, this is a direct consequences of uh, development of the Tokyo Olympics and uh, Posse went to closes 9, 2 and 7, 3. And what I believe this means is we know about the um, Africa for Africa um, sports company by a Nigerian. You know, we hailed this. This is great that this is a Nigerian who's manufacturing sports sportswear for uh, people. But Puma, as we know, already had a deal to produce those kits. So it's this conflict of interest now that has led to Puma terminating its uh, sponsoring and leasing agreement. Um, well, uh... You know, the, the controversy concerning the Tokyo Olympics continue. Um, we've had one story or the other, all through, you know, since the Olympics started. If it's not disqualification, then it is, you know, protesting athletes or, you know, it is, you know, one thing or the other. It's, it's always one bad story or the other. Um, Esubu may try to save us, but, you know, that obviously is not enough. Um, the AFN, in their statements, basically has uh, thrown the sports minister under the bus, saying that it is as a result of a leadership tussle and you know crisis in the um, between the Ministry of uh, Sports and the AFN. You know that's the reason those kids didn't eventually get to Nigerians. Uh, former Senator Shehu Sani also put out um, you know this statement that we just showed um, you know on the screen, and also a short video clip showing that the Puma. Uh, kids actually did arrive, but they weren't used by the Nigerian team. So like you mentioned, you know, where was the miscommunication? And is this really as a result of one person, uh, you know, trying to show who's boss in the ministry and trying to, of course, you know, you know, tell them that, you know, he makes the, the decisions here and not the Athletic Federation of Nigeria. Um, these are, you know, very legitimate questions that need to be answered by the Minister of Sports Sunday Diary and, um, you know, the AFN uh, leadership also. The, you know, the embarrassment with Puma pulling out on the deal, you know, my fear really is that that might not really be the end. Um, there might be lawsuits uh, because of agreements that were initially signed. Um, there's also a rumor that somebody must have collected some money uh, from Puma to ensure that those, um, you know, agreements were signed or to ensure that those kits were used. That, that's a rumor. 
Um, and but you know we, we don't have verification of that. I don't you know, think there's Puma also, would be out chasing Nigerian well, athletes. Well, there, there's, so there's a rumor. I, I, there's a rumor that I had seen that somebody I, had um, collected two point. I, I mentioned this on the breakfast. That someone collected two point something uh, million, you know, euros or dollars or something. Uh, I to, personally believe Puma already has that international rep. So I. Until we get evidence, I wouldn't believe well, that once again, it's a, might have once again, it's a, once again, it's a rumor, right. um, and there's no verification for that story. Um, but, you know, there's also people who have insinuated that, you know, out of personal interest, you know, some, somebody wanted to use the, you know, Made in Nigeria brand yeah. and to also, you know, make some money yeah. off that. And that's why, you know, that deal went forward, you know, what went forward with that deal instead. But obviously that deal has not been in any way beneficial to the Nigerian athletes mm -hmm. in Tokyo because, well, some of them are washing their, you know, their jerseys, jerseys oh. because they don't have enough. Um, the Puma um, uh, kit apparently has about 40 different items inside. Also promised about $15,000 for, you know, uh, medal winners. Or I think about $5,000 for bronze, $15,000 for, for, um, for gold, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so all of that we're not going to get. Yesterday you mentioned that, oh, we hope that the Nigerian uh, promises to these athletes um, uh, do, do not get, um, um, do, they don't fail with these promises. And I remember that I mentioned yesterday that that's not what these athletes should be gaining for. And you know, in a stable sports environment, it should not be the government who's giving houses or money to athletes. It should be endorsements from sponsors. sports brands. It yes. should be endorsements from sponsors. But we don't, uh, we've not been able to get our sports you know, um, space in, in, in that uh, direction direction yet and that's why we keep leaning on and hoping that the government will give somebody a house well we've missed out on puma let's see how this goes and if there's an, another lawsuit i am here for it and i would love to talk about it on the breakfast okay another big top trending story this morning is about a nigerian couple and i put couple in quotes because the lady in question claims to be unmarried but staff of her company says she actually is married to one Muiwa Folorungsho, and her name is Gloria. Um, I wouldn't pronounce that last name because I don't Osei. want to murder it. Um, yes, Gloria Osei. And um, we know that they have a company called Divergence Enterprises, and they operate um, lots of businesses, including POC Money. That's, that's very popular. I've seen endorsements of that POC Money by, um, or POC, yes, by some Nigerian celebrities, Hyber Factory, Poco Yom, and all of that. Now, the allegations is that they use these companies to fleece Nigerians, number one, and that they, you know, employ staff, promise them, you know, great work culture, one month, two months in, they fail to pay them and they lay them off. And then they employ new staff. One month, two months, they don't pay them, they lay them off. So it became like a cycle. And um, people call them out severally on social media. But Gloria, I'll say, is someone that lots of people respect, lots of people look up to. She's one of those motivational speakers that will put on long threads on Twitter that would inspire you to you know, just go out there into the world and achieve. But when these allegations of investment fraud, fraud came out, you know, it, it just opened another, you know, can of worms. And this is a, an exclusive here by a site called The People's Gazette. They're basically saying that Interpol has declared Gloria Osei and her husband, um, Muiwa Folorisha, wanted for investment fraud. Now, people are calling them um, Bonnie and Clyde for allegedly defrauding investors of up to one billion naira. Let me put a quote here from uh, um, Interpol. It says, these funds were however diverted to personal use. That's funds generated from their businesses were diverted to personal use, including for the purchase of luxury properties and foreign citizenship. Uh, actually, this is something that the victim said in a petition in January 2021. Um, there were warrants of arrest that were separately issued um, for Gloria Ose and uh, for Lauren Shaw uh, off by the Lagos Division of the Federal High Court, uh, saying that they were obtaining money under false pretexts. Um, now, that notice by Interpol um, said that uh, Falorin Shaw is wanted by the police for offences, including um, obtaining money under false pretenses, stealing diversion of funds, and all of that. So it just goes on and on. There's a picture of uh, Falorin Shaw here saying, Muiwa Charles Falorin Shaw, he is wanted if seen, arrest and hand over to the nearest police station or to the office of the Commissioner of Police Interpol section. Man, this is big. Uh, well, yes. Um, I, I don't, you know, you mentioned that she used to put on motivational quotes, you know, but that's stereotype criminal behavior. Um, <laughs> you know, same thing Hosh Papi used to do, you know, go on Instagram and put up the best aspire motivational to, quotes, aspire to, aspire to, aspire to retire to <laughs> Ogbon of Fire. What? Um, they used to put out, you know, they, they, that's what they do. Um, but, 
two things or three things that I will mention. First of all is the fact that, you know, when they were called out in 2019, was enough time for them to have been properly investigated by Nigeria's um, criminal justice system and found wanting. But they failed. And that's in 2019. I remember that uh, Twitter period when she put out a 5,000, you know, long thread, you know, of, of uh, her, you know, claiming that these allegations were false. I mean, that's where, that's where it died. And a lot of people lost their investments, lost millions and millions, maybe even billions of naira in investments in whatever it is that they set up as companies. Yes, one billion um, naira. I'm sure one it is billion. a lot more. Um, but that is for maybe one of the investment programs. You know, there's, there's a couple of them that they've also been, you know, allegedly have uh, taken money off people for. Um, so, but we failed at that time. The reason this is coming up now is because, well, Interpol has been brought into the picture because somebody obviously has gone further with, you know, his own investigations and has, you know, uh, put a petition to, the, to Interpol and, of course, they've been declared wanted. It shows really, and this is the point that I'm trying to make, it shows really that, you know, here in Nigeria, for, you know, the longest time possible, it's very, very difficult for crimes like this to be easily spotted and be investigated and for these people to be found wanted. And it, it really questions what our criminal justice system is like. And our security agencies, are all the investigative agencies that we have in Nigeria, what do they really do? Because these people, you know, were called out in 2019, and I'm sure that these crimes didn't start in 2019, it probably started earlier, but that was the first major time that people called them out and spoke about their, you know, the issues with, you know, the both of them. The second thing is, how do, at what point in their marriage or in their relationship did one decide that they were going to fleece people of their money and the other person said, yeah, let's go ahead and do it? Um, you know, is you know, was it just after you know, you know, a rainy Lagos morning? Was it just after she got back from the market and prices of goods were expensive? Was it just after they, you know, you know, finish in the other room? What at what point did both of them decide that we're going to be Bonnie and Clyde together and you know be a criminal couple? You know, allegedly. Um, well, I have to say that until they're arrested and found guilty, um, but. It's pretty obvious that these two people have a lot of you know, questions that need to be answered. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they are found and you know, arrested. Because right now, with these stories breaking, there's going to be a lot of anxiety for you know, thousands of people who have invested in any of these platforms or any of these investment uh, you know, programs that they've set up. And maybe others. I saw someone called me yesterday and was wondering, you know, are they the owners of this or are they the owners of that? You know, do I need to go pull my money out? You know, I'm a little scared. And I said, I really don't know because you can never really tell. Um, but once again, I hope that they are arrested and um, I, I wouldn't say best of luck to both of them. Hmm. All right. So I guess that's the much we can take today on Top Trending. Um, interesting stories there regarding this particular case. But one thing I've seen, one thread I've seen with the whole rate of scams is the fact that you know, Nigerians are business inclined in, in more ways than one. We're always looking for ways to, you know, just make a living somehow, some way. And if people come out with a promise of, you know, doubling your investment, I wouldn't really say they were not being wise or smart because when you go and check out these businesses, their websites, the personalities of these guys, they look legit. That's I mean, I told you that, <laughs> I told you that there are remarkable Nigerian celebrities whose name I would not mention who have endorsed these people, have done, you know, brand campaigns and all that for them only for Nigerians who have invested their life savings to find out that this was all a scam it's so sad that's and why then, it's going front <laughs> and, know, then so Puma. You put, you put and your, then Puma your you know best you know uh, figures out put your best foot forward you know it looks very very interesting to a lot of people you know put out false claims you know a lot of people you know then get in put in their five hundred thousands their one millions their five millions and you know it disappears you know you go buy a house buy a car buy jewelry you know buying you know foreign citizenship and disappear to a different country that's 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 you know, basically what is. All um, right. So I guess that's the much we can take on Off the Brown Top Trending this morning. Let's take a break here and we'll return with Off the Press.